tell me about Mad Lib and Freddie Gibbs. You you said you wanted to cover this album. You told me to listen to 2014's Pinata. I did, loved it. Um, listened to Bandana, liked it not not as much, but I liked it a lot. Um, tell me about this grouping and just kind of like how they came together. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting just because Mad Lib, the producer, and Freddie Gibbs, the rapper, are just the latest duo that Mad Lib has been a part of, like, like a super duo, right? Like he has, uh, obviously, most famously, Mad Villain with MF Doom, Mad Villainy, a uh, classic album from like the early 2000s from Doom and Mad Lib. And then also <clears throat> J-Lib with J Dilla and Liberation with Talib Kweli. And <clears throat> now we have Mad Gibbs. And, you know, they started out with a bunch of EPs, was really just a bunch of loose songs. A bunch of them ended up on Pinata. And then Pinata comes out and it's kind of the, this, this, landmark moment for freddie gibbs as a rapper he's someone who's been independent since like 07 i want to say and has been grinding uh, quite a while has been pretty well liked as far as underground rappers go but pinata just the union of gibbs's gruffness his matter of factness with the incredibly unique you can't match it production that mad lip has been doing for 20 years and it's just really exciting stuff and then they hear uh, them come back five years later, take, taking their time and actually getting a bit of major label distribution for this new record, Bandana. Uh, it felt like they were, you know, really happy to work together again because I think this is the first time they actually worked in the studio. The last time they just kind of worked, you know, through email like a lot of people in the industry do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, very interesting just because I mean, it, it feels like the natural arc for, for Mad Lib is just like the latest stop for him on his you know crazy career but for gibbs this is truly like a a coming out party and Mm -hmm. uh, i think kind of just cementing him his status as like one of the most underrated underappreciated rappers we have um but yeah it's uh it's just exciting music for sure i mean so (laughs) what did you like so much about uh pinata when you listen to it well you know listening to pinata i guess i went in thinking knowing a little bit about Freddie Gibbs, not as much about Mad Lib. I was expecting it to be a little bit more like hard rap trappy. And it really has this like soulful uh, vibe where Mad Lib really uses a lot of um, soul samples, you know, guitars, yeah. uh, choruses, and it really makes it this like really funky living groovy album to listen to. And Gibbs just kind of flows over it. And I think, um, I think why that that's his claim to fame, right? That he can he can rap over any beat. Like he doesn't, he's pretty flexible is what he, what he kind of bills himself as. And I think he does that pretty well. I don't think all of it was, was perfect, but you know, I, I texted you, um, I was listening to robes and the end of that, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really care for like the last minute or a half of speaking. Um, but right. when, when robes is going like er, Earl Swesher, Domo Genesis and, and Gibbs all really flowed over that perfectly and then it goes right into broken with scarface which i also really liked and yeah. that's i was digging the whole album up to that point so it's like man like <laughs> the, the whole thing just flowed and i was really floored it, i th- is mad lib always like this soulful in terms of or is he more like is he have a different style depending on who he's working with definitely different depending on who he works with but yeah he's very like a he's like a throwback producer gotcha. the samples as you recognized uh, a lot of layered production yeah um I think it depends when you're listening to him, like Mad Villainy. Mm-hmm. There's some, you know, like Hall of Fame beats on that album. And they don't sound anything like what you listen to from Pinata or Bandana, that's for sure. But that's just mm-hmm. kind of speaks to Mad Lip. He can do so much stuff. He's kind of like a Kanye yeah. in that regard, very throwback producer, can try anything and pull off a lot of stuff. Yeah. Did you did you like Pinata as much as I did? Oh yeah, I think Pinata fucking rules. Um, mm-hmm. The features are so choice too; like they're they're, they're kind of sprinkled in. But you reference Earl and Damo and Danny Brown's on there, Absol, Mac Miller on there, Scarface. You know, yeah. it's it's it, it's it's great. And yeah. you know, Gibbs is a guy who I hadn't really. I mean, I had known about him forever just because he's a name you always would see in the blogs and stuff. But he was just one of those artists who I never really made a conscious effort to dive into and learn about because he had a big back catalog and I was just like, you know, just ignoring it. And Mm -hmm. 
then I think when he, I think he had he had a he had a brief stop in jail, and then when he came back with Pinata as well as those two solo albums, uh, uh, Shadow of a Doubt, and then You Only Live uh, Twice in 2016-17. I think those albums, uh, when I saw those, I kind of went back, listened to Pinata for the first time, and like you really kind of just figure it out. And last year he had two uh, mixtapes, one just called Freddy, uh, which I loved, and then uh, another one with Currency and Alchemist called Fetty. And those are great. We didn't cover them on the pod, fortunately. I got to them a little late, but and you kind of realize like, oh, this guy's is like, like consistently great. And mm-hmm. even if sometimes maybe that the, the projects have a little filler at times, it's like Freddie Gibbs filler is still kind of a high bar. So uh, I was definitely anticipating bandana, especially once they uh, kind of just started releasing those singles. I think flat tummy T was the first one and then uh crime pays and then Giannis with Anderson pack. And then again, just, it just feels like a big flex that you get Anderson pack to do a feature. And it's like, oh, this sounds like old school, like peak Anderson. You know, it's mm-hmm. like any any disappointment over Ventura is totally gone when you hear this Anderson feature. So yep. I had a lot of hype going in. That's for sure. And did uh, Bandana live up to your potential or what you were expecting? Sure. Yeah, I uh, I think I think it did. You know, I, I, I think Pinata is better. Pinata also was just felt much more fresh and out of yeah. left field and unexpected. So they're operating in obviously different different worlds mm-hmm. but having all that hype from the hardcore fans as well as new people that are going to come to this because the major label push is going to just get it into more ears uh i still think it really uh, delivers what you want from these two again the unique hard to describe layered production from madlib as well as just incredibly introspective uh matter of fact bars from gibbs and Mm-hmm. Again, the, the, the features are still quite choice, Anderson. But even like a song that I didn't even like, I didn't even love the features from Killer Micro Pusha T, but still really mm-hmm. exciting to hear them on a song with Gibbs. Yeah. And then at the end, you have uh, Yasin Bay and Black Thought, obviously most deaf and Black Thought. That's uh, again just kind of exciting voices to hear. So I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, I, I thought Black Thought's feature was probably my favorite on all this. I felt like he really kind of got the vibe of of the album a little bit more than something like palm olive where like killer mike and push a t seemed yeah i think a bit out of place a- anderson pock is like such a fucking chameleon and i think this is you know mad lib and him could make an album together seamlessly and it would oh. sound great uh yeah well, I, I love that team up but uh yeah i, I just I, I really like this album like if i was ranking them or like giving them scores it would be like uh you know, pinata is something like a 85 and like bandana is like an 82. Like they're, they're close for me. It's not like they're far off, but I, I do agree that it's not as fresh. Um, and I didn't really hear them trying a lot of new, you know, a lot of different things on here. Um, that then they did on pinata, which I think, uh, you know, you knock them a little bit for, but still this is high quality shit. Like <laughs> if yeah. you, if you appreciate rap music or even just like music in general, like you gotta be, you gotta be checking this out. Cause there's, it's really, really good. And the production madly, I, I I'm surprised I wasn't more aware of him. He's so good. Like his, his beats are crazy. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's, I don't want to spin wheels, but it's just, it, it's top tier stuff. And mm. you know, I don't think it's my favorite rap album of the year, but it's certainly one of the best. It's yeah. kind of hard to argue against that. Absolutely. What song stood out to you most? Uh, I like Giannis a lot, and I like that even without the Andy feature. Uh, I like Crime Pays. I like the Education. Uh, I liked uh, Goddamn a lot. I like the uh, mm. kind of political-ish lyrics, diving into that yeah. that world a little bit on that one. Um, yeah. Uh, I like most of the songs, to put it that way. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, Goddamn and Crime Pays. I also really like Cataracts, which comes near the end of the album. I thought that was a pretty good track. Um, we I already added uh, Crime Pays to our um, Nostalgia Best of 2019. Again, give that a follow and listen on Spotify.